Welcome back, everybody, for more Torico Unveiled. Wow, I said it right that time. Keeping that appetite unsated and the mouths watering, we head back into the gourmet world. Today, we'll be detailing two more continents as we keep going over the power of the Eight Kings. First today, we head into Area 3, called by Coco the harshest realm in the gourmet world. One of the smallest land masses, in fact, in the gourmet world next to areas one or six. Area three is dubbed the Cloud Continent. We see that there is very little actual ground. The ecosystem even having cloud trees high in the sky, one of which is the location of Biotype Zero and the elite defenders of the Ego or International Gourmet Organization. The reason these clouds exist is because the lower levels of Area 3 sport massive volcanoes capable of reaching space with their eruptions. The ash, in my own theory, form these massive clouds and supply the ecosystems above with nutrients similar to the ozone garden. And Area 3 is in fact home to Akasha's full course drink, Adam. The source of Adam comes from the cloud mountains in Area 3. Adam erupts from the cloud mountain as presumably lava and or molten gourmet material. The eruption reaches into space and while there picks up toxic materials then falls down to earth as the ingredient we know is Adam. Consuming Adam fully awakens the gourmet cells of the torso and head, excluding the heart, tongue, and brain which are awakened by center, another, and God respectively. Now, my theory is that outside of Adam, these toxic chemicals also rain down and poison whatever ground that is actually in Area 3 and leads to it becoming a poisonous region, thus causing life to evolve in the skies. And the ruler of the skies, the master of Area 3, Emperor Crow, Crow King, scaling in at 3,000 meters, 1.87 miles long, and 25 million tons, the Emperor Crow is basically the size of a small mountain, and its wingspan is even longer, with the average crow's wingspan being about twice its body length. We can guesstimate that Emperor Crow's wingspan is at least 6k meters. The crow would look down on the Grand Canyon while in it. And for scale, remember one of the Monsterverse's greatest creatures, King Ghidorah. Yeah, the Crow King is over 18 times the size of Ghidorah, and Ghidorah's movements create a Category 6 hurricane. And I don't know if you guys know, we don't have an official category 6 for hurricanes. The winds the Crow King would generate, I suspect, would be beyond any scale humans can measure them in, and would leave traces similar to the Mudder Snake. Although, very little is known about the Crow King and the Emperor Crow species itself. But thanks to Kiss, Coco's pet Emperor Crow, we know that a weaker portion of the species once lived in the human world and went extinct, leaving one egg behind that became Kiss. And Kiss shows development and battle IQ on equal level to the other baby kings, Terry and Quentin. And we see the Emperor Crow is capable of spinning itself like a drill and piercing through its target, as well as scattering its plumage to disorient its foe and aid its friends in battle. The Crow King on the larger scale is a bit more broken. With a mile plus long wingspan, the Crow King would create literal hurricanes and windstorms just with his movement. And if that wasn't already devastating, it possesses an occult-like ability that those who enter its shadow experience a trance-like effect where they literally forget existence and, you know, get vaporized. This ability itself isn't really explained, and honestly, I truly have no idea. It took out a fragment of Neo with relative ease, and this ability in theory would be like a god descending from the skies above and blessing the earth with mass extinction. Which is again, why I believe that life evolved in the skies of Area 3, because it's impossible to think that anything could develop on the ground with the Crow King swooping by in his shadow literally destroying everyone. The Crow King's abilities don't even stop there. Like all of the great beasts, he can fire beams of appetite energy and this extends to being able to create shadows by making miniature suns in his mouth. This would not only allow the Crow King to activate his signature ability anywhere he went, it also shows that this creature, as I've said in previous videos, can create a small star of feet just like the Whale King and plenty of the other kings I'm sure could reach. Again, I can't, uh, I can't comprehend this honestly. A short flight from the Emperor Crow day or night would kill off millions of organisms within miles. But moving along for now, if you're still watching, congrats, it's the halfway mark in the video. Thank you for watching this far. It really helps me out on the algorithm and gets me noticed. And pat yourself on the back for still having a long attention span in this day and age. Next up is Area 5. 
One of the more mysterious areas that, once again, we know very little about when it comes to its regions, the only real areas we know of were Multigravity Valley, an underwater area of Area 5 where a rare species of leaf fish lives, and the Food Region Forest, the heart of Area 5, and it is in fact where Akashia's dish news dwells. Consuming news fully awakens the gourmet cells of the left leg, and the tasting flavor of news enables one to control the speed of their gourmet cells' cellular division, allowing them to exceed the speed of light, aka allowing them to create and manipulate back channels. News is actually tasteless and can be only experienced if one has eaten another which awakens the tongue of their gourmet cell demon. The only real thing we know is that news is located directly within the food forest region and is massive. This forest is, like I said, mysterious, with trees that have an odd appearance that make them appear as though they have no surface. The funny thing about this place is it's on the literal back of our next eight king the second largest of the eight kings and ruler of Area 5, the Deer King, Sky Deer. Sky Deer is a literal gentle giant, coming in at 60,000 meters long or 37.28 miles, 10,000 meters tall or 6.21 miles tall, and weighing 8 trillion tons. Very few other creatures are as large as Sky Deer, and it is nearly a mile taller than Mount Everest and at a speed of, let's say, 60 miles per hour, it would take you a half hour to travel the length of the Sky Deer's body. Amongst the kings, Sky Deer is considered to actually be the most docile, there being two reasons behind this. One, Sky Deer often rests underground within the food region forest being on his back, and there are countless beasts with capture levels above 4,000. These beasts roam the region around him and alone are so powerful they would be continental destroyers unchecked in my opinion, and some seem drawn here, I theorize, because of the presence of news on the Deer King's back. As we've all noticed, each of Akasha's full course ingredients tie directly into the environments they dwell in. Perhaps these dangerous beasts flock here and are allowed to stay because the Deer King's environment offers greater prey and safety, which is why they protect the forest, and two, Sky Deer is actually one of the most vengeful kings when angry. He possesses the manipulation of the back channel on a level unseen throughout Tariko. Back channels are paths torn through reality essentially, that give access to separate pockets of time and space, and Sky Deer can directly manipulate them. This allows Sky Deer to create isolated prisons where it can freely speed up and slow down the passage of time. This can accelerate individuals' lifespans or even pause time and render them unaffected by the passage of it. Examples of this are when Sky Deer created an isolated space where time was 1,000 years for every one second outside, meaning a minute would be 60,000 years, effectively meaning any non-godlike being being placed in his back channels can kiss their life by, well, you know, except one, and could even result in examples of the hyperbolic time chamber where you could train for years and not be affected by time and outside, only seconds have passed. This ability would quite literally body the vast majority of any anime roster name. The speed at which you'd be isolated and start to decay would be unavoidable. This ability may as well be a domain expansion from Jujutsu Kaisen because once you're there, it's gonna be a sure hit and you're gonna get forcibly accelerated to dust. There are also ancient beasts living inside of these isolated back channels that separately from you won't age due to the Deer King's command, and they'll tear you apart while you're being aged millions of years a second. But once again, everybody, we find ourselves at the end of today's video. There's only one more of the eight kings left for us to explain, and I saved the most information-rich continent for last. So if you made it this far, thank you, you're cool. Leave a like on the video if you don't mind, and the final video in the series will be here soon. As always, remember to stay sane and stay safe and give thanks for the bountiful wealth of information in the Toroko universe. Itadakimasu.